We are all familiar with the Ten Commandments from the Bible. Christians feel obligated to post them everywhere. They are so proud of them and claim they are the basis for the law and morality of their Christian nation. The Bible says they were carved into stone by their perfect and omnipotent God and are the ultimate objective morality. In their zeal to force their Ten Commandments on us all, they lie. Since history does not support their claims, they have tried to rewrite it. They seek to turn our enlightened, deistic founding fathers into Bible-thumping Christians in their own image. Let's take a look at them to see if they are as advertised. Number one, thou shalt have no other gods before me. So far our Christian citizens have not succeeded in making worshiping the Bible God the law of the land, but given their way, they will. Number two, thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. I guess to the Bible God, not making idols, paintings, and photographs is more important to him than banning slavery. Again, there are no laws prohibiting graven images. Number three, thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. What is the name of the God of the Bible? Oh, here it is, Exodus 34, 14. Jealous is my name. So don't be saying, jealous, damn it. Number four, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. The Sabbath is Saturday. I don't think many people, even Christians, follow this one, except for the Seventh-day Adventists and the Jews. Other Christians like Sunday better, so they just ignore this one. Number five, honor thy father and thy mother. Wait a minute here. What if your parents are drug addicts, alcoholics, physical or mental abusers, sexual molesters? Do we still honor them? Okay, we're halfway through now. How many of those commandments are codified into our law? None. Let's move on. Number six, thou shalt not kill. Now we are finally getting somewhere. Finally a rule that is not just to stroke the frail ego of the Bible God. Seven, thou shalt not commit adultery. This is a good piece of morality, but it is not part of our laws. Number eight, thou shalt not steal. No problem with this one. Number nine, thou shalt not bear false witness. There are no laws against lying unless you are under oath in court. So this one is not part of the law either. And finally, number 10, thou shalt not covet. Now this one is downright silly. Based on this, you should never want a nicer home, a new car, or any other consumer product. It is in direct conflict with a capitalist economy. No one follows this one, and it is not part of our law. So how does the claim by Christians that their Ten Commandments are the foundation of our laws? I'm sorry, Christians, but your claim that the laws of this land are based on the Ten Commandments is totally without merit. And your misplaced pride in the Ten Commandments is puzzling. Not killing and not stealing are codified in the law of every civilized country on the planet, of which many are populated by folks of different religious beliefs and different holy books than the Bible. Is this the best that your omnipotent God could muster? Where is the, thou shalt not own slaves? Thou shalt not destroy the earth. Thou shalt not abuse or molest children. Thou shalt not mistreat animals. It is evident that the Bible's Ten Commandments are of little to no value in regard to moral instruction. It is glaringly clear that the drive to post it in public buildings and schools is the crass promotion of the Christian religion, nothing more. If we are going to post a set of moral codes in our courthouses and schools, I would vote for those called the Native American Life Directors. What say ye? As always, thanks for watching.